Hello, my name is Doug Jenkins and I'm going to give you an overview and context for today's Managing Digital Resources training course. Managing Digital Resources. Increasingly, the school libraries are providing a gateway to digital resources and as we collect more digital resources, we need to look at the implications for digital rights management. This is in terms of copyright, licensing and security, cataloguing and yes, even cover images. DRM, or Digital Rights Management, is an environment when you have your DRM managed by your supplier. For example, with ebook subscriptions through an aggregator like Wheelers or Overdrive, they manage the digital rights management for you. The same when you have uh, encyclopedias integrated in Federated Search. In Federated Search, also databases such as ProQuest, uh, they're in and they're integrated and the licensing agreement the HAP department has only allows for staff to use them, not students. The department also manages through Oliver the digital um, resources repository. However, some resources have to be managed locally. Uh, so you have to take uh, action to ensure that you're following licensing agreements. Such is the case with journals where there are PDF attachments. If you, if you get something like issues in society and you load up the PDF attachments, you have to protect uh, that attachment because part of the licensing agreement is that only students and, stu sorry, only students and staff in your school uh, should have access to it. If you have other services such as encyclopedias or uh, video services such as ClickView and TV for Ed, you can't publish your account details uh, on things like the home page. You can't provide uh, public access to those or you're contravening the licensing agreements. Digital resources also can have cap catalog records and SCIS have lots of uh, catalog records for digital resources. Uh, so please use SCIS wherever possible to get the additional access points in search via SCIS subjects and SCOT terms. Otherwise, with, say, a subscription service such as an encyclopedia, there may be no need for a catalogue uh, record. So, for example, if you're using Britannica or World Book in Federated Search, it's an integrated service, you don't really require catalogue records for those things as well. For ebook providers such as Willers and Overdrive, Oliver manages to load a mark record for you from the supplier. So when you order a book, uh, a new ebook for, from one of those suppliers, uh, the mark record is automatically loaded into, into your school's Oliver system and then Oliver does something clever. It goes looking for a SCIS record and overwrites that record automatically. So it's always up to date. Um, SCIS do special orders. Uh, there are bulk, bulk records for some things uh, like World Book ebooks or ClickView. The issue is currency, it's never going to be completely up to date and it becomes a management issue in itself. Where you get a package of uh, free ebooks uh, from a supplier uh, with your subscription, uh, be, be careful before you just load them all up. You, you probably need to um, do some evaluation and we'll be looking a little, little bit later in another session on uh, some uh, questions you should be asking before you go ahead and load them. Often they'll have American content that is not relevant to the New South Wales curriculum. Cover images. Yes, even cover images are subject to copyright. We've just recently, in response to um, user questions, published a how-to, which gives you some detail about what is okay to copy and what's not. Questions have also been asked about capturing home site or launch um, pages for website records. Again, you need to check with a publisher or a copyright agency. Best probably to make management easier, to stick with the covers provided by SCIS and Google because they are covered by Department of Education agreements in New South Wales. So digital resources are disruptive. Uh, just when things are going along nicely, everything uh, has to go back to scratch again. Uh, we can no longer be just uh, repositories of, of physical uh, resources, we've got all these uh, multimedia things to handle as well. So focus on um, 
syllabus of requirements when you're making your selections, uh, for example, with multimodal text. Uh, we're going to have a look shortly at collection development and selection issues in purchasing or subscribing for digital resources. And uh, it's important not to just uh, get everything carte blanche just for the sake of having digital resources. They should relate to something. Basically, we shouldn't get um, tied up with um, format or GMD. It's the content that's important, not necessarily the format. The same applied in the past to things like um, audio, visual, things like video. It's always best if your digital rights management is going to be managed by the contact provider and it's uh, um, less onerous for the school to manage it themselves. So if you want to um, proceed down the digital resources path, uh, which most of us already have, uh, it's the implementation of digital resources to be successful. The most important uh, part of that is context. The management of it is a tool, not a, in itself. Uh, to quote uh, McCammon from 2013, successful integration of digital resources into school library collection occurs when people have a plan for what to do with them. So not just loading digital resources for their own sake, but knowing how and when they're going to be used. Thank you.